homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, today we are to that place where uh, we've put on this entire side. Uh, I only lacked three boards, getting almost to the end, and then I'll have to go in the shop and trim a board to make it fit right flush on the end. But I'm not going to do that right this second. I'll save that for a little trim work. So. Now, I could go ahead and put the windows in this side. This side is up to the point that I could go ahead and install the windows. But, and the windows I'm using are sliding glass doors. You can go back, or four years ago, I found sliding glass doors at our restore for a uh, I think they were five dollars a piece each section each sliding glass door not the two but each section of a sliding glass door were five dollars a piece and it seems like I bought eight or ten of them I had a whole pickup truck load about all my little Ford F-150 wanted to carry I think back then I had a Dodge I think I had a 1500 series Dodge anyway I've stored those up here in the goat barn uh, which we've got to do the sides on it yet I put some doors on it just regular old doors that I got for three for five dollars I put those up on it just so the sides would be enclosed so I could store stuff in there but uh, I bought those doors and stored them up there well if I put them on now while I'm still doing construction around the outside perimeter of this thing I'm afraid that what will happen is I'll break them or I'll break one or two and I'm going to take a chance on breaking them as it is okay I'm going to take a chance on breaking them as it is but if I wait till I put them all in at once or all in in succession after the woodworking part is done then it'll be a whole lot safer to put those windows in. So my goal today is to get this backside done. Now the way the backside is, it's so short, I don't think I'm going to put up and down boards in it. I think all I'm going to do is I'm going to come up there to the board that's already there and I'm just going to put boards parallel. Okay, like siding, like clap, clapboard siding up for those. I think that's what I'm going to do. And then uh, I'll show you how I keep the wind from blowing through a little later. Because that's so short, I've only got, oh, six or eight inches to get to the ground all the way around it. So I think I, that's what I'm going to do there. But this other side, uh, the south side, needs to be done just like this one. So I'm going to go ahead and get at that today. And uh, that's what we're doing. Now, I know some of y'all say, why do you show these videos in this way? Well... I just show you what I'm doing. It's about chronicling our life. So 
I'm just showing you what I'm doing today, what I'm doing the next day, what I'm doing the next day. Homesteading is a lot of repetition. Now, I'm going to get this greenhouse built, and in my next project immediately, and I've got to dig my potatoes and beans, and, and there's just other things that are going on too at the same time, uh, but I've showed you digging potatoes, and I've showed you digging beans, and, and I'll probably video some of that too, but right now this is what uh, the pressing thing is. I want to get the greenhouse done so in the spring I can grow my sets out here. I want to get my tractor shed done because the weather's being hard on my little Mahindra tractor. Plus, I'd like a place to put my golf cart because I've got to work on it. And where it's at right now, I can't work on it in there. And for the most part, in the summer sun, I can't work on it anyway. So I'm going to fix a place in the tractor shed where I can park the golf cart and work on it. So, And also, I would like a little workspace in there. So the tractor shed... It's going to be a multifunction shed. So I think it's 21 by 34 is what uh, I've got it planned for. 21 by 34. Well, that's a pretty good size building for an old fat guy to do all by himself. So the greenhouse is a good size building. It's a 11 and a half by 14. If you count the overhangs, it's 12 by 14. Or it's 12 by 14 and a half. So that's the greenhouse. I've got three times the building to build for the tractor shed. So that's where we're at. That's what uh, I'm going to be doing for the next, I don't know. I hope to get the tractor shed before the end of November to get it done. Uh, will that happen? I don't know, and I'm not going to make a prediction. Uh because tell God your plans and he'll start laughing at you. So let's go over here and get started on the south side of this greenhouse.
Okay, that's uh, time for lunch. I gotta figure out a little something, but I'll tell you what it is. This top board is bowed. And so that makes my my siding not want to meet up down there to the bottom board. So I've got to figure out what I'm going to do about that. And probably what I'm going to do is put a board where the bow's at and let that be enough. So uh, I'm going to take a, a little bit of lunch and think about it. Okay, I'm back from lunch. And uh, what my problem was when I took off and went to lunch, this top board is bowed out. Okay? So, <clears throat> when I put the bottom board on, that makes it so when one of these goes on, ow, I've got my knee on something there that's hurting. Uh, when this board goes on, it makes it such that it doesn't want to touch that board and be straight up and down. So what I'm going to do, the biggest bow is right in here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to nail another board in there. That'll give me something to uh, catch that on, and then I can move forward with putting this other stuff up. So. That's what I'm going to do. So I'll go ahead and get that board on and put you back here where you can see there's stuff under this grass. It hurts my legs. Oh.
wide. Got to go hunt a board. There's my new to me toy. Uh, I'll explain about it here in just a second. Well, if you look in the background, you'll see my old Ford F-150. Uh, it has uh, no air conditioning in it anymore. And uh, it would cost more to replace the air conditioner than the whole truck's worth. Except, have you seen the prices of trucks lately? Anyway, for the last three months, I have been looking for a truck. And the little blue truck you saw just a minute ago, little Dodge Dakota, is going to be enough truck for me. I don't have to have a great big heavy duty truck. Now, the old Ford still runs. Uh, it's real rusty. The frame's real rusty. I was getting a little bit worried. I didn't want to take it on the interstate and different things because the frame's so rusty. Now, that old Ford, it'll tow about 7,900 pounds or 6,900 pounds or something like that. Uh, with the frame as rusty as it was, I wouldn't trust it to haul 3,000 pounds. But I've been hauling stuff with it. I hauled a lot of the lumber that you see me working with and I hauled a whole bunch of other stuff. So. Uh, I've hauled a bunch of stuff with it, but I was just getting leery of uh, what might happen. So, I've been searching for a truck, and I found that little Dodge Dakota at a pawn shop. Uh, the price of trucks was just absolutely crazy. But that little Dakota, it didn't have any check engine lights on. Uh, it didn't have... Uh, but 93,000 miles on it. It's a 2005 model. The only drawback is a key costs $350. Because you can't just go buy a key and program it yourself. You have to uh, have the dealership program it. And I asked them if I could bring in a key and they said no. Uh, I'd have to get their key and have their laser cut key. So if they won't program it for me even if I bring in an aftermarket key. Uh, I found a locksmith, I went to Ace Hardware, and they wanted $240 for the, for the key and the fob, and uh, the key and the fob are all one thing. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, it looks like that. The key and the fob are all one thing. I've never had a car like this before, so I didn't have a clue. Uh, so, they would have sold me one. I think it was $229 at Ace Hardware, but then I'd still had to take it somewhere and get it programmed to the truck. Well, the only people that does that is a locksmith. And they do their keys. I don't blame them. Uh, so, I'm just going to have to eat it and spend $350 at the dealership and get me a key. Breaks my heart all the way around. But that's just the way it goes uh, in life and homesteading and all that stuff all the way around. Now, I'm going to end the video here today. My grandson's got a football game tonight, and I want to get cleaned up and go see him play football. It's kind of an important thing. Pay attention to those important family things. They're important regardless what you're doing on your homestead. Now, if you like this stuff, this homesteading, do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. 
We do this homestead stuff all the time, and we upload on Sundays. Now, with that being said, it's time for me to get on to the next thing.